Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to go back and do some bits and pieces on my Iron Man suit, which I never finished before I started the other projects. So, if you remember, we've got um, electronics in the suit, which are driven by two buttons. So, I never finished off um, any method of pressing the buttons when you're in the suit, and they're currently still on this piece of breadboard. So, uh, what we've got basically is some control electronics in the suit and a wireless link which goes through to a display in the helmet. So you should be able to see in there, it currently says Jarvis ready. And if I toggle through these buttons, I've got one button which selects different options, which I believe is this one. No, it's this one. And that should scroll through different menu options, sending the um, text wirelessly to the helmet. Um, and the other button basically selects the function. So if we go to open, and press the other button, we should find it opens, and if we scroll through, so it says the next function which is close, and press that, and it should close. And we can also turn the eyes on, so they come on when it closes, and we can turn them on. Obviously we could program it to do anything, so I could program them to stay on, but to save battery power I have them turn off afterwards. And I can also activate the Unibeam, so this helmet is completely wireless. We can send arbitrary messages to it as well. Um, so if I scroll through to Unibeam, and hit the other button, it powers on my extremely bright Unibeam, which has got 60 watts of LEDs in it. It doesn't stay on for long because it does drain the batteries and it also blinds everyone. So, um, the, the, the main thing is I've got this piece of electronics hanging out, which is just two switches. I need to find some other way to mount them so I can use it when I'm wearing the suit. So my original plan was to put um, some switches in the hip pods which go just above the um, thigh panel there on each side. So the plan was to have a magnetic reed switch in each of these which is activated by a magnet um, either in the cuff or in the finger of my uh, glove. So I can basically toggle each one by just touching it um, so I can have one of the hip pods to scroll through the menu and the other one for activating the function. The only thing I didn't think of at the time uh, was in fact that these side panels which hold the thigh together are held on with very very strong magnets. So um, obviously the problem with putting a magnetically activated switch in here is that it will probably be activated constantly due to the proximity of the magnets in here. So what I'm in fact going to do is build a mechanism so I can actually press these switches, which are very low profile switches, um, which you actually press the top there. So I'm going to um, build a mounting underneath these hip pods so we can press the whole hip pod down very slightly and that will activate the function rather than it being magnetically activated. So here's a CAD drawing for a piece I'm going to 3D print. And um, my printer is a Lulzbot Taz, and it's a very special Taz because it has dual extruders. And that means that I can print in two materials at once. Uh, one of the uh, extruders on my dual extruder setup is actually specifically for flexible material. So that means I can print um, a wheel with a tyre printed on it in one piece, and various other hybrid prints that are part rigid and part rubber. So in this particular design, the um, blue parts are going to be printed in rubber and the two red parts there, the base and the top, this piece is on its side, are going to be printed in rigid ABS plastic, uh, which is the same plastic that the hip pods are made from, those were 3D printed as well. So we have to switch this switch which doesn't really have any proper mountings and it's very small. So the plan is that the switch fits in the cavity right in the middle and the hip pod is um, bonded to the red T-shaped piece on the top and we can weld that on with acetone so we can actually make a chemical weld because both materials will be ABS. The red plate at the bottom is to mount it onto the next piece which actually be mounted on my hip. And um, then obviously the blue part is rubber so it's squashy. So as we pr press down on the top on the hip pod we can depress the switch. So let's get a couple of those printed off and see how well it works. So here are the two parts I've printed, um, there's a few spidery bits on the inside of them because the uh, Ninja Flex tends to ooze a bit, but essentially the, um, they're all printed in black, black plastic and black rubber, but the top there is rigid, 
um, that piece is rigid and the rest of it is flexible so this piece will compress very very slightly which is all we really need so I've got the switch here which is very very small uh, normally there's two legs on each side but um, the other two snapped off but basically those are the two terminals which get connected when you press the switch and the black thing on there you can just about see is the piece that gets depressed which is very low profile uh, but nonetheless if we insert that in the slot there we only need to press that very slightly to activate the switch so of course what happens is that the hip pod goes on top and that will get bonded to the inside there with some acetone and then when we press the hip pod it will activate the switch and the bottom of that's going to get connected to another piece which we now need to make to mount onto my hip. So I've just attached my switch to a multimeter in continuity mode which means when there's a contact it will beep just to show you that works so you don't need very much movement at all. Just light pressure really to depress the switch and that should work fine. Right so we're going to do a chemical weld on these and fix these two modules inside so the hip pods, so the hip pods as I mentioned are ABS as is the rigid plastic component of these. Uh, so to do that we're going to do, use some acetone, a small paintbrush, and I've also got this, uh, my favourite pot of black ABS dissolved in acetone. So all we have to really do is um, wet both surfaces. So we just use this paintbrush to get some acetone in there. There's a few spindly bits of support material that are in those which I just need to kind of weld together so we'll just make that really wet with acetone as well as the top surface of this we'll just put some acetone on there and then I'm going to apply some of the lovely black gunk in there as well to sort of fill the gaps because the uh, inside surface of the hip pods is a bit rough That should do it. If we insert that in there, yeah, looks like there's plenty of liquid to fill the gap. So we'll squish that around a bit. Try and get that in the middle as much as possible so the rubber can still bend. And we'll do the other one and leave those to set up. Acetone evaporates quite quick so should make a strong, strong chemical weld within half an hour or so. So I've printed a couple of other bits of plastic, which are these two. Um, they, I printed that bit a bit high, and I've just measured this up against a suit and decided to chop the tops off, which is what these are. So they were on there, so I've just spl split it on the layers, which as you can see the infill inside, giving that a bit of a sand. Uh, basically these are going to hold some connectors, which are these. So that's going to be an electrical connector to the switch and of course the hip pod is going to mount on here so I'm going to acetone weld that bit of plastic on the bottom onto the stump there which means that this piece will get pressed down right in the middle which will press the switch really easily um, and these things are going to be then mounted onto the side of the hips just above the existing hip side panels the ones I showed you earlier that are held on with magnets so they'll be attached to the legs and when I put the suit on I'll then plug in the wires that go to the back of the torso where the electronics are. So I need to get the switch soldered onto that connector for each one, which I've got just here, and get those acetone welded on to make up the modules. So those are my switches installed, I'll just be checking those with the meter to check the joints are okay. Sounds pretty good, so that piece is going to get obviously slid into the hybrid rubber and plastic cavity and this piece stuck on there. Right, so I've got all little bits of the suit here. I've attached the hip pods to the top of the thigh there. They're just basically glued onto a block of foam so that they're nice and stable. And we've got the switches attached to the, uh, obviously in there, and the connectors attached to the torso so they can plug into the top there. And then obviously that's the switch that activates the electronics. So I just wanted to talk about undersuits as well. So my duct tape dummy has a black undersuit on. Uh, which is the one that I've been using for a while. I've also got some red undersuits. So I've got this nice glossy one, although it's not really the same red as any of the rest of the suit. So um, I'm not sure whether to wear that really or not. I've also got a plain red one, um, which is probably a closer match. 
Um, however, my neck seal is still actually black, so I've got the black undersuit here, and at the moment I've only got this Stormtrooper neck seal until I sort out uh, building the proper one for the suit, um, and the gloves as well are actually black. So for now I'm going to wear the black one, but in the future I'm going to wear the red one um, when I've actually finished off the rest of the sections. However, um, as the suit stands, it's actually the first time it's fully wearable in one piece, um, although there's a couple of extra details to make. Obviously now the electronics are sorted, it can wear it, be worn and be and function. So um, let me put it on and I'll show you what I've got so far. Right, so there's the whole suit together. Hopefully you can see all of this in the shot. Um, I've got all of the pieces. Obviously there's still some painting to be done on the back. I've got a mirror just out of shot here so I can see uh, myself. It looks like everything's in place. Uh, you'll notice I've got one hand missing and that's because it's the only piece I can't put on by myself because I need my hand uh, to put my chest plate on and then I can't actually put my hands together to put the last glove on. So I'll need a helper to put my last hand on, um, which is just here. Obviously the hand plate is still attached to the suit on that side, and this one is my clever flip-up one, uh, which opens the weapon on the top. When I move my hand that way, and if I do it right, I can flip my hand back um, with the use of some magnets and a clever mechanism. You can um, have a look in my channel to see that. So, um, it's feeling pretty comfortable actually. I'm not overheating yet, and it is the heat of summer, so it's pretty hot in this room, because it's a loft room. Um, so yeah, we should be able to activate the hit pods now, to uh, activate the uh, functions. So if I press the right hit pod now, I'm already on the close part of the menu. So it should shut. Not sure what happened there. What's that? That's turning the eyes on. Let me just shift through. So there's open. Sounds like my faceplate's got jams, but never mind. I'll have to look at that in a moment. Let's see. Right, that should be Unibeam. Yep, looks like it's on. I can just see it out the bottom of the helmet and powering down, so let's scroll through. Let's just give that a shake. Yeah, that's better. So there we go. So I've got my, uh, hopefully you can see my legs in this shot, all my articulated feet pieces, which work rather well. Have a look in my channel for more information on that. Just flip that back on, there we go. So, if you want to see more of how this suit was made, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, check out my channel. There's uh, around 50 Iron Man build videos in there. Um, you can also subscribe to my channel, of course, and like my Facebook page, and follow me on Twitter for future updates on other projects. And also, don't forget my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me. That's all I have for now. So what happened to my faceplate? Well actually, uh, during that video it jammed of course, and um, actually the top hinge had come unstuck from the top of the helmet, which was hot glued on. Um, I've now glued that on and left it overnight to set with Gorilla Glue, which is incredibly strong. So now this is working perfectly well, and if I uh, do this, we should be able to see that. It's pretty smooth in operation. So um, I would refilm the last part, but it took quite a while to get the suit on so I'm not going to. Um, the only other thing I need to do to this helmet is put um, some pieces in there which are the, the teeth, which are a bit of foam with some scoring on, and then the suit's pretty much ready to wear, so there are other pieces I need to fill in, which I will do, but the main thing is I can go and wear this suit out and about, so I've got some shows coming up in the next couple of months, and I've got some other videos planned actually wearing the suit. Mm -hmm.